Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Sunny Makhija uh, and I'm a senior inside sales specialist at Crave Infotech. Uh, today we are presenting on uh, mobilize plant and field workforce using SAP Asset Manager, which will be presented by Rachel Romanowski and Shrika Nestane. Uh, now, Rachel is a part of digital asset uh, solution management team globally responsible for strategy, direction, go to market and customer adoption across SAP maintenance and service solution portfolio. Uh, Rachel specializes in business processes uh, across the entire asset life cycle with a focus on mobile, uh, geospatial and maintenance management solution. Uh, industry experience includes oil and gas, chemical and other asset in intensive industries. And we have from Crave Infotech, uh, Shrikan Nistane. Uh, he is a digital transformation enthusiast experienced in uh, SAP Digital Core, Enterprise Asset Management, Enterprise Mobility and Cloud Platform. He has 27 plus in of industry experience helping organization in wide range experience with technology and techno technological changes for multiple line of business. And uh, now without any further ado, I would hand over to Rachel to start the presentation. Over to you, Rachel. Great. Thank you, Sunny. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Great, perfect. So thank you all for joining. Um, as Sunny mentioned, my name is Rachel Romanowski. And uh, the first uh, part of today's session, we are going to cover um, over <clears throat> a couple topics. I do have a disclaimer up here up front because we will uh, touch about a little bit of our roadmap topics around our asset manager solution. Um, so just uh, upfront disclaimer on uh, planned um, innovations. Uh, I'll first start off talking a little bit around maintenance journey and options optimization and some of the dynamics that surround that and market trends um, uh, as it pertains to mobility and, you know, where we view empowering our workforce is critical um, to be able to ultimately uh, drive that maintenance journey and optimization. And then I'll dive in a little bit around our asset manager solution itself and a high level overview and some of the latest innovations from our roadmap. And then uh, the second half, I'm going to pass it over to Shrikant um, uh, to discuss from Crave Infotech's perspective, some of their experience um, out there with mobility within uh, maintenance execution uh, for your workforce. So without further ado, um, you know, when I'm talking to our customers um, here at SAP, you know, uh, uh, in the maintenance space, it's really around, you know, how can we drive the most proactive um, uh, optimization um, for their maintenance uh, journey? So we traditionally, we, will, we look at it in four different buckets. Um, we have our historical way that we've looked at maintenance around either it's the break fix, reactive and preventative planned maintenance, time based. Um, and, you know, as over the past, you know, 10, 15 years, we've really pulled in condition based maintenance, leveraging things like inspection rounds, measurement readings, um, and then tying in some sensor information to get more around you know, the condition of that asset to trigger off some of these traditional planned maintenance activities. Uh, and then ultimately, the goal would be how can we be even more prescriptive, um, leveraging additional technologies and moving towards uh, a more predictive uh, way that we approach uh, um, our maintenance and how we approach, you know, uh, tackling uh, undertaking our assets performance. And what's key around, you know, whether you are uh, addressing reactive emergency work preventative or even future machine learning and leveraging machine learning health, mobility is going to have a key play across uh, regardless where you are in that, that uh, uh, maintenance journey and optimization and, and can help along the way as you move towards being more predictive and prescriptive. Uh, just one of the key technology disruptors, if you will, well, you know, we've had mobile devices probably in our personal lives, right, for 20 plus years. Um, it's really taking a look at and how we apply it from a maintenance perspective is actually one of the areas that, um, if anything, has been overlooked um, quite often for some of these more advanced technologies, um, whether that's, you know, how do we apply uh, Internet of Things or big data that we're capturing from a manufacturing and production perspective, and then also apply it to really that machine health um, or exposing that to our technicians to really understand and be able to be uh, more proactive in understanding 
you know, uh, from a diagnostic diagnostics or fault recognition um, uh, perspective to, to really uh, get down to the root cause of what might be actually going on when we have a, for example, um, unplanned uh, downtime, or even leveraging uh, additional technologies like AR or drones to be able to pull off information um, from remote inspections. Uh, so all of these technology disruptors are going to have an impact when it comes to maintenance. And as you adopt additional uh, technologies, you know, according to a latest uh, study released out by McKinsey is, you know, we're seeing up to 30% reduce in maintenance costs. When we're talking around acid intensive industries, whether that's the oil and gas, whether it's chemicals, but even in our, our um, uh, traditional discrete and consumer uh, product manufacturing, you know, it's very critical. Uh, maintenance has a lot of overhead costs uh, when we have uh, advanced machinery that is reliant upon for uh, production. And so being able to approach this, you know, in the maintenance organization is very critical um, to be able to reduce some of those costs. And ultimately, what we wanted to achieve is machine um, machine uptime or reduce the downtime uh, so that we can uh, have more throughput from a production perspective. And so all of these technologies, whether in, in different uh, ways, can help impact across that uh, uh, maintenance cost savings. And uh, as I mentioned, mobility being a critical part of those technologies to be adopted also has a critical part across the entire business process chain for maintenance. And, and how do we increase our effectivity, uh, effectiveness um, around you know, a desired outcome, first time fixed rates, uh, et cetera, by having the right information at their fingertips and also efficiency, um, minimizing labor time and, you know, uh, optimizing, you know, spare parts usage. And so uh, we also have a tie-in across uh, or the ability to, to leverage and is important to tie into these additional areas across the business supply chain, not just looking at it from solely the execution perspective, but being able to have a tie into, you know, the condition monitoring or the IoT information, sensor information, machine learning health, um, being able to, you know, provide visibility to maintenance schedulers um, on, you know, where we are in the work process, all the way out to making sure that we're capturing the accurate data uh, uh, out in the field so that when we bring that in full circle, we have reliable data to be able to make uh, important decisions around maintenance strategy. And so um, ultimately, you know, when we leverage mobility in uh, the asset management space, um, we're not only streamlining and looking at uh, a reduction from the maintenance technician and the execution themselves, but it has an impact across the entire, you know, maintenance supply chain, if you will. And at SAP, we have our holistic, uh, uh, what we call our intelligent asset management um, portfolio suite of solutions that help drive forward this maintenance opt optimization journey for our customers falling under the lines of asset performance management tools, whether that's predictive um, uh, and machine learning, whether that's our core meat and potatoes at SAP around plant maintenance and uh, execution, our, our operations aspect, planning, scheduling, uh, and, and, and capturing costs, uh, and, um, or even some of our more innovative areas where we're collaborating across um, internal and external stakeholders, leveraging things like an our asset intelligence network, our entire, entire portfolio, mobility has that through line. So you can kind of see where we've wrapped uh, around our, our holistic portfolio of where it's going to touch these different points. And ultimately, the importance around that is being able to make sure that we are enabling our workforce with the right information around whether that's um, the right spare parts list, the drawing and specifications, uh, what operations and tasks they have to do, um, and how can they better uh, do fault recognition out in the field at the port and performance. So when we think about empowering our workforce with mobility, you know, traditional business process from a technician perspective on the mobile device, um, uh, really around how can we streamline and, and, and create a, a simple way that we can interact um, across some of these traditional business processes, whether that's de uh, maintenance demand processing, the execution, the confirmation side, or even inventory management transactions. We want to be able to expose that um, and make it simple and easy to consume um, while still being able to tie into different areas, whether that is um, 
you know, uh, taking advantage of some of the trends that we see within mobility, whether that's, you know, being able to leverage uh, and tie into these adjacent innovations to drive some of these efficiency gains. And when I say adjacent innovations, not just talking maybe around the, the IoT or sensor, or the machine learning health. I'm also taking advantage of device peripherals, cameras, GPS location, geospatial, um, GIS information data. How can we all tie that in from a mobile perspective um, to have that in one cent centralized perspective, one centralized area for a technician to interact with? Um, being able to then ultimately achieve quantifiable quantifiable business value um, across different silos. So the people, your processes, your asset, and the, uh, the data, um, ultimately that's the, the, the key source of, um, you know, leveraging mobility, um, being able to have that single source of truth at your fingertips. And then, you know, as we start to talk about some of the, you know, more recent impacts that we see and how mobility has a play in there around driving resilient operations in the current environment that we're in, and, you know, even in the foreseeable future, when we might have capacity restraints or uh, social distancing guidelines, you know, how can mobility make sure that a technician um, can go and execute their work out in the field seamlessly without having to impact um, and all while ensuring that we're meeting industry standards, whether that's ISO 55,000, et cetera, and then while keeping uh, our technicians safe. And so uh, the way that we look at um, um, mobility here at SAP and you know, with our partners in this space, it's really ultimately empowering the end user, empowering the people um, uh, for their role. And so when we look at a maintenance technician or field service engineer, you know, making sure that they're able to, to execute their work safely. They have uh, intuitive information to make uh, um, uh, appropriate decision um, uh, or uh, de decisions moving forward and have full visibility kind of across, you know, uh, the work history or um, uh, equipment information, instructions, et cetera, for them to be able to do their job appropriately. And so from a mobile perspective, it's all around managing that work and asset data, whether you're online, offline, or occasionally connected. Um, so, all, you know, oftentimes, you know, we, we don't really control where uh, these equipments are uh, completely located in remote locations. And we want to be able to enable capturing and integrate that information at the point of performance, the point of execution where these technicians are actually doing the work because ultimately that will down the road have an impact in data reliability and being able to um, uh, drive uh, proactive work towards unforeseen events um, to be able to execute any of these complex tasks more efficiently. And so really the persona, the, the mobile technician or the technician field engineer is really at the center of all things that we do within mobility in the asset management space. And so with that, you know, we'll tie in a little bit around uh, the solution itself before uh, I pass it over to, to Shrikant here. And that's really where um, our next generation mobile solution, SAP Asset Manager, comes into play. You know, at SAP, we've been in the mobile space for probably 20 um, uh, some odd years. We've had have a lot of experience in this area and taking what we've learned, what we've gathered, and then leveraging next generation platforms to be able to, to take uh, mobility for, for maintenance execution into the, uh, into the next generation. And so what SAP Asset Manager brings to the table, you know, still the tried and true, the end-to-end -end asset management um, on the go, whether you're online or offline um, for those rem remote um, activities. So, you know, ultimately mobilizing that entire uh, maintenance execution and demand processing, um, uh, accessing that from your, your smart device, um, as well as being able to leverage um, and take advantage of an enterprise grade application where it has robust, complex business processes behind it uh, and provide a consumer grade user experience that we're all used to in our day-to-day -day personal lives. Taking adv advantage of, you know, the native device features, whether that's the camera or simple things like authentication, touch ID, the location services, but also, you know, standardizing a coherent look and feel um, across our SAP solutions, leveraging design languages um, specifically for these devices, taking advantage and having those design principles for a native mobile application. Uh, we've also taken into consideration on, you know, just not um, 
not only ad addressing the standard work execution process, but building pre-built components that are available with Asset Manager for a customer, for you to pick and choose based on your industry or per persona use case um, to, to add on and, and, and really uh, enhance asset management ourselves. And this is also an area where we're working with our partners you know, like uh, Crave Infotech to even build out this portfolio of component add-ons even further, whether that's around um, utilities and meter management, customer service, or more on a, a calibration perspective or life sciences with quality management and how we can expand you know, our standard work execution um, um, for a technician, uh, depending on uh, what those business processes are. I mentioned, you know, we're, we're taking Asset Manager into that next generation of technology. We leverage our SAP mobile services uh, platform in the cloud um, and a mobile development kit that's metadata, uh, metadata driven um, to be able to allow for full customization framework to be able to edit, change business logic, the screens, be able to brand according to what you um, uh, need to uh, your individual um, company, as well as being able to apply these changes cross-platform uh, deployments. And so Asset Manager really is also meant to be a toolkit um, for you to build upon based on your specific um, needs. And then uh, lastly, it is a cloud-based deployment. Um, there are uh, more or less leveraging our, our cloud platform as a service, if you will, our, our mobile services, and then still being able to integrate with your on-premise um, ERP solutions whether that's um, S4 HANA or ECC. And, you know, from a feature functionality perspective, I mentioned, you know, we, we looked at, you know, where this really impacts uh, our technicians. Um, so first and foremost around demand processing, being able to take maintenance notifications and requests, change, confirm, add um, items, uh, failure codes, modes, causes and damages, breakdown information, et cetera. Importance by, you know, capturing this, um, these have important in, uh, impacts into analytics downstream, right? Being able to capture, this is a breakdown, when's the malfunction and start date, that's going to have an impact to your mean time to repair, your mean time between failure, uh, analytics around your equipment. From a work execution, I mean, that's really the crux of this, um, um, being able to, to change your work order, capture labor time, materials, and costs doing uh, inventory movements um, according, but also making sure that we're capturing, you know, any kind of um, uh, approval steps, signature information, um, you know, being able to simplify and capture inspection rounds, meter readings that are also going to have an impact into uh, when maintenance uh, work actually needs to be done against assets. And then ultimately, uh, exposing from a master data perspective or work history perspective, all of the uh, details behind equipment and functional locations, your technical objects that a technician might need to have, applying things like, um, you know, uh, embedded analytics to be able to have a visual conception um, directly from that mobile device, but also have insight into warranty information, bill of materials, um, the hierarchy, being able to search uh, and control that, um, doing installs and dismantles on the equipment and view, historical information, and then also, you know, edit characteristics um, of those uh, technical objects, you know, uh, how oftentimes that we're out in the field and, or in front of the, the asset itself and realize that there's actually, you know, maybe incorrect information. Um, what better, uh, uh, what better persona or person suited to, to help um, uh, fix or remedy that than those that are actually doing the work themselves. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, the crux behind all of this is really the usability. So leveraging a mobile device, having a simple user interference, uh, uh, user experience, leveraging our design principles with Fiori and applying those to an iOS and Android design, uh, design language, and ultimately allowing that online offline data capture. So a technician does not have to be disrupted on if they do not have connectivity or there's a slow connection or waiting for the next field to load, Le leveraging an offline mob mobility first uh, um, principle allows efficient data capture um, while they're doing their work, um, uh, et cetera. And so we also have tie-ins to geospatial capabilities, um, integration into ESRI, GIS information, and our, our geo-enablement framework, um, and then, you know, making sure that we have the right information. Oftentimes, our customers, you know, are leveraging uh, 
document management systems to store work instructions, et cetera, making sure that we're pulling in um, support for that, not only SAP DMS, but also third parties such as an open text, um, SharePoint, et cetera, to be able to pull that data into uh, and expose that via the mobile uh, device. And so usability is that, that underlying through line when we talk about asset manager itself. Um, I also talked, you know, up front around this industry or persona component-based approach. We have um, uh, under your project with Asset Manager, you can pick and choose which components you want to deploy on top of the base functionality, depending on your use cases. Um, and so we have uh, quite a few here, one around <clears throat> the field operations worker that ties into routing and stop capabilities, meter management that uh, also adds um, uh, functionalities around the ISU component within SAP, Crew management, if you're managing a crew, capturing labor time and, and vehicle information uh, accordingly and timesheets there. Quality management around um, a, a, a great time. This is one of our latest um, in components that we released at the end of last year. Uh, this has a critical tie-in to calibration processes um, and being able to process an inspection lot and capture results um, against inspections directly from embedded within Asset Manager. Uh, and then also tie-ins to our uh, additional intelligent asset uh, solutions, whether that's our predictive asset insights or asset strategy performance management, exposing indicator information, machine health information, um, as well as we're, we're also shifting and adding additional persona components. The first one, which will be coming out later uh, in our 2105 release, um, that is our supervisor persona. So now a supervisor can come in and approve work if there's approval workflows that need to happen before work gets closed out, access that directly from the mobile device, maybe do ad hoc reassignments um, as well, and sign offs. Uh, we have a supervisor persona that will be coming out in our 2105 release. Um, so ultimately, before I pass this over, you know, asset manager is really at that crux of, of across that, that through line, um, um, across the maintenance uh, digital process chain. And ultimately we wanna drive um, operational excellence and enabling the technicians, um, whether that's being able to simplify um, the user experience uh, and simplify the business process flows that they need to capture and actually uh, capture that data at that point of performance. And then ultimately, you know, drive this digital transformation, uh, transformation forward, not only from, you know, leveraging these digital technologies, but then also how that impacts, whether that's around um, improved training, uh, you know, being able to, to drive uh, first time fixed rates of critical assets, et cetera, um, uh, all leveraging our mobile execution. And the last thing I'll talk about here is from a roadmap perspective, some of our, our, our key things that are coming forward. Um, so we do have an interactive roadmap. I do recommend that you take a look out here. We have a link um, directly to it where you'll see details in which quarter um, that this release will be um, available. But one of the, the key things that is coming forward is actually uh, Windows support. So uh, previous to this, we only had uh, iOS and Android support for Asset Manager. We do plan on driving Windows support um, for Windows 10 devices that will be coming out in 2022. And so um, I know that's very critical and something that our customers have been asking for for Asset Manager. Um, and so I can now announce that we have committed uh, to that delivery. Development is underway. Uh, and so excited for, for that new enhancement um, to, to come forward and to build out our cross deployment um, portfolio. I mentioned that supervisor role um, that is coming out in our, our latest release, as well as being able to support multi-user device, um, device support. So being able to share devices, having technicians log in, log out um, from the app itself um, uh, to be able to capture their work. So in a shared device uh, uh, environment, that's uh, really critical. And then, um, uh, keep in mind on some of our additional features and functions that will be coming out, um, whether that's around uh, generating new asset information out in the field or um, applying um, things such as uh, digital signature support for, you know, compliance purposes like 21 CFR Part 11 for life sciences, um, pharmaceutical industries. And so I uh, wanted to point that out um, that we do uh, have Windows support coming uh, moving forward um, and take a look at and stay up to date with our latest roadmap. Uh, with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you, Shrikant, um, uh, from the Crave Info Tech perspective. Thank you, Rachel. That was great.
Um, Sunny, would you like to do the polling? polling? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Rachel, for sharing your experience and thoughts. Uh, and uh, now I would be like to launch uh, a few poll questions and I would request our attendees as well to just give us um, only 30 seconds so that they can go through the poll questions and uh, uh, then Shrikant can take over from here. It will not take more than 30 seconds. Shikanta, I think you can just go ahead and I'll just leave the poll open so that whenever they have, they can just uh, go through the poll questions. Sure. Yeah. I, I think I will have to share my screen. Yes. So yes. let me share my screen. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through standard uh, <clears throat> asset manager demo app. And let me share my screen. So coming coming yes it's there okay so this is how the standard asset manager demo app looks like so this is called overview page some people also call it landing page so on the top there is a map of course we can go from here to see the details on the map that's very cool function right? i can see the details of each of these uh, map objects I can view notification, create notification because I selected um, specific asset. That's one functionality, uh, which is very uh, helpful and important for larger geographic area field service, right? people out in the field. The next part is if we have routes, if you are using routes, there is a route functionality also there. Uh, then you can see the high priority orders. So anything which is priority one and two, by default, is considered to be high priority, and they will be listed into this section also, so that people know um, what they need to work. Of course, this is again based upon your process. And typically, we have also hidden these sections depends upon the business case. Very simple enhancement. It's just basically uh, modifying couple line of code and you can uh, take them off. We have a customer right now, they don't use map, they are in a plant environment, so we have hidden the map, which is possible. The next is the timesheet. You can basically look at current and up to 14 days of timesheet. Uh, and also you can add timesheet if needed from here. Finally, and the most important is all of your uh, transactions and data. So you have orders. So in this case, I have 47 orders. 16 notifications, I have 130 equipments. Uh, there are three reminders. Functional location, there are 37. Of course, this is all depends upon how we configure the asset manager. Um, I can um, download all the equipments or I can only say download the equipments which are attached to my orders and notification. I can configure that. Or I can uh, put a lot of filters based upon equipment category, equipment type, statuses, inclusive, inclusive, exclusive, and just get the subset what I needed. The same applies for functional location equipment and some other master data. So there is very uh, nice configurable filtration capability available in the SAP Asset Manager configuration deck. <clears throat> Let's go into the orders. So uh, another thing is you can also configure it to work on the operation level or work order level. So when I say work order level means you will you will still be able to work on the operation. You will be able to still able to complete, but the workflow will be different. Uh, so here in this case, it's at the header level assignment. So there are many level of assignments available for downloading and key are header level assignment, operation level assignment, header level work center assignment, operation level work center assignment. The first two, when I talk, those are the personal numbers. Um, then there is a capacity assignment, which is the, um, and also there is a new available for the MRS assignment. And you can also customize and uh, create the assignment based upon your need. Um, and there are several uh, personal ID, uh, PID parameters can be assigned. Uh, in the user profile and those also can be controlled. So pretty flexible actually. 
So going into the work order, uh, this is how I can see the list of work orders. This is where I have different filters and sort criteria that are available. <clears throat> I can sort by priority, description, due date, order date, or order ID. I can filter by all these criteria, statuses, um, and so forth. I can also create new work order right from here. I can define which work order type should be my default. So people don't have to select. Um, plant can come from my default assignments. I can uh, search equipments by description. It's a fuzzy search. So I'll, let me see if there's a form. There is a form. And um, uh, business area, uh, the work center comes as a default. I can add notes. Can add description. I'm just demonstrating how to create a new work order. Right? And next, it will ask me about the first operation or multiple operations. So, so this is operation uh, control key. Again, I can default. I'm going to pick uh, plant maintenance internal. And then here we go. I'm ready to get the so order is created. Now this order gets locally. So I can see here, uh, I can filter by um, sorry. It should come. So it will say local. Uh, into the description so that uh, I can um, we are also uh, typically customers look for different uh, there are five pair five fields available into the list and I can pick and choose them and I can make some modifications if needed so that's about the order I go inside the work order I can see the location details, number of operations, what equipment, uh, functional location, if there is a notification, if there are parts. And this is where I can start the future processes from here. So I can look at the operation. This will give me the, all the operation details if there are any sub-operations. Um, uh, there are notes, any PRT, there are three PRT, there is a part. So I can basically, so I can do part uh, issue or part uh, so I'm actually adding new part. I can also add new parts or I can issue part. So here, these are the part details. I can basically issue part or add note. And I can also uh, return parts. So at the end of the order, if there are any parts left, I can also return them. Looking at the time we have, I will probably skip some of these steps. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of this. Similarly, we have notifications. A uh, lot of customers decide uh, just to download the notifications which are connected to the work order, but you can have notification processing also separately, and then uh, notifications also can be processed. From the notification, I can create work order. I can add uh, catalog codes. Um, yeah, I can add catalog codes, which is item, act, task, activity, add notes, add reminder. I can also enter the measuring measuring points if they are available let me see if i have anything if it doesn't have yeah here we go very nice so measuring points will be displayed displayed graphically of course because the real estate you will see three and then you have um, additional will be additional data and i can um, enter uh, take the reading and i can create the reading measurement reading for that. Uh, the good news is the layout is structured in such a way or the user interface, it will work on the mobile, it will work on the tablet, um, both of them, no issues. So that's how the asset manager um, key functionalities. Again, you can go from equipment, uh, you can install and uninstall equipment, that functionality is available from the equipment itself. And again, measuring points will appear here. I can take the measurement readings from here also if needed. Same for the functional location. I can install, uninstall. 
um, that function is available out of the box. Um, did I miss anything, uh, Rachel? Would you like to add anything from the, before I finish the demo? No, I think that's great. Um, I think, you know, highlighted uh, some of the, the usability aspects and, um, you know, I, I think from a, an end user, right, being able to either leverage geospatial information, have context, being able to have some of the, the analytics from the measurement points at their fingertips and be able to, to execute and capture that pretty simply. I think you hit it all. Right. Excellent. So I'm going to stop this and I'll go to the presentation. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about what we have done and how we can help. Let me get my another screen share. So here, um, okay. so <clears throat> we, we call it intelligent asset management maturity model. Um, so we, sorry about that, mouse is pretty sensitive. So this is basically reactive to predictive journey. And, and uh, as we have seen and worked, uh, working with several customers, we have seen every one of them is at different stages of this journey. Uh, once, so of course, reactive is basically we uh, wait until the system fails. Although we have SAP or ERP available or not, that doesn't matter. It depends upon how we act. Then we, um, uh, if you are performing maintenance at a regular interval, that's basically preventive. Uh, continuously observing the status of assets and react to the, that's condition based. And finally, is the predictive, that's where the maturity curve is right now. So we have created a 39 question, um, which will allow us, once you answer those, allows us to identify where you are on the maturity journey. It might, you might be in between uh, reactive and preventive, or maybe preventive and condition, may not be exactly at that, but helps us to uh, help you identifying where you are. And then we can create a journey map for you. I'm going to talk about that in the next slide. So this is where basically uh, how journey starts. So first we want to capture equipment master bomb order processing calibration, right? Uh, and all of that, that's why we uh, go to the ERP. And that's where the SAP comes in picture. Once we have that in place, we want to start acquiring the data. So there are many ways currently uh, we do it on, a lot of people do it on paper and then they come back, enter into SAP. And we all know what the challenge is, right? People get misplaced and so many things. So uh, that's where the mobility comes into picture. Field mobility, offline capabilities, and that's where the asset manager comes into picture. Uh, asset manager has several flavors, right? Calibration, facility, rounds manager. Uh, in addition to that, um, if you have, you have enabled your assets with uh, ability uh, to interact, with the backend system. Now this IoT is a pretty broad term and IoT can be as simple as acquiring data from SCADA or it can be as elaborated as um, getting the information from locally empowered edge um, instruments and equipments so that uh, we get specific information that helps us to make right decisions. So that's IoT. And the third part is the collaboration for better information like SAP's Asset Intelligence Network. So Asset Central Foundation, Asset Intelligence Network, they help to collaborate between several organizations. So that's where we come to the data acquisition side. Once we have acquired the data, we have an ability to start analyzing that data. And that's where comes the RCM, reliability centered maintenance, failure mode analysis, risk-based analysis, and root cause analysis. All of these can be achieved through SAP's Performance and Risk Strategy Management, that is ASTM, Asset Performance and Strategy Management. Once we have that, uh, we can use that data, the good data, to do the failure mode analysis, fingerprint management, indicator forecasting using the SAP's predictive uh, analytics. And finally, they both gives us what corrective actions we need to do. So that's incorrect data entry, measurement outside the reading, and that's where comes the recommendations, and those all corrective actions come back to the mobile. So this is kind of a complete end-to-end -end journey. We help you to identify where you are 
and find out which is the right tool for you at the right time. Because if you are only on ERP and you want to go to predictive, there's a very high, highly unlikely that it will succeed immediately because for predictive to function effectively, you need to have a good data, good historical information. And these different steps are absolutely necessary for success. So with that, um, I would like to map. Uh, so we are talking about asset manager, but I'm painting a larger picture where asset management is one of the component. So when Crave Infotic comes into picture, we can help you for end to end. So scheduling, dispatch, uh, tracking and map based dispatch, planning workbench, approvals, and then the mobile applications. And we stitch together different solutions available. So MRSs for scheduling and dispatching. Um, this is our addition or extension, uh, planning workbench, approvals, and the vehicle tracking, which is also available on cloud platform. We're using SAP cloud platform technology, and then asset manager calibration, CFSM. So these are different uh, applications we work with. Now, just to summarize that, uh, so we um, are SAP, of course, uh, we implement SAP plant maintenance, customer service, also for ISU work management, uh, which is slightly different with the flavor of device management, uh, and then also integrating with. Uh, we have also experience and working with SAP work manager, and of course, asset manager. Then comes the intelligent asset management stack, asset central foundation, AIN, predictive and uh, maintenance. And finally, if you are on SMP, uh, so that's local SAP mobile platform, uh, which is going out of service. Actually, it is out of service as of last year, um, unless it is extended. And you need to move to the SAP mobile service migration. We can help you. We have mapped all those different mobile service migration scenarios, and we can help you and make your life easier. In addition to that, we have our prepackaged extensions for calibration, especially for life sciences industry, planning workbench, work clearance management, and connected assets and IoT, which is basically vehicle tracking uh, for field services. And in addition to that, we also help you with the barcode and RFID enablement. We are also a Zebra partner, uh, and we also partner with a few other hardware uh, companies whereby we bring in end-to-end -end solution for you, which can include RFID and barcode enablement, hardware, that means mobile computing devices, and also the software solution. This is just a glimpse of our uh, asset, uh, sorry, vehicle tracking solution. Uh, this is a slide is here about the intelligent asset management. Uh, you can refer that. Uh, of course, we can, if you want to talk, we can discuss. Now coming to what we have done is just to make it simple because it's always difficult to, uh, to get an arms around what's the scope and how much is the cost. So we have created some um, Amplify packages. So it's called SAP Amplify packages where we have defined certain amount of scope and what might be the cost. Um, so it's by region. We have defined the scope. Uh, and uh, this is for implementing plant maintenance, implementing asset manager, and if you want to do plant maintenance and asset management together. So there is a specific scope. We can discuss that. If you have any specific needs, please reach out to us, and we can talk about your specific need and how we can get you up and running and going uh, in a very short period of time with a specific scope and the budget uh, in mind, and we can commit to that. Finally, about a little bit about Crave. So uh, we are passionate about uh, combining five things. One is the SAP Intelligent Enterprise, which is, of course, ECC or S4, Cloud Platform, prepackaged solutions, which we talked about some of them, uh, Zebra Mobile Computing Technology, and Geo Enablement for different areas, which includes warehouse management, asset management, and supply chain. Um, 13-year-old company, we have three partnerships with SAP, uh, sell, build, and service, all three. And then we are also a premier partner with Zebra and also reseller, and same with the here technology. Located in New Jersey, headquarter, global presence, global customer base. 
this is a list of some of our customers utilities oil and gas uh, life sciences then uh, companies like siemens uh, comscope uh, manufacturing uh, chemical and uh, public sector and healthcare that's a list of all different customers just few things i'm going to going to go through that finally um so uh, you can bring us your transformation challenges uh, we have free no obligation assessment to see where you are on the maturity curve for the asset management uh, this is how i look like uh, this is our toll free number email address uh, sunny feel free to drop your email address uh, so that uh, people can reach sunny is our uh, inside sales lead and uh, he manages the communication with the team we'll open up with that we'll open up for uh, any questions comments you might have um i don't see any questions here but uh, rachel do you have anything to add No thanks you know thanks for con I think uh, um <clears throat> thanks for supporting and um also you know if you have any other questions you feel free to reach out to me I'll put in my email um uh in the chat as well for sure. any questions around um asset manager and mobility So one thing I like um to hear today is that uh, we are going to have windows version it's very important are you right a lot of customers are looking for it um they want to use what they have and keep uh, uh minimize the change management for their existing workforce yes absolutely i think that was one of our our uh you know critical reasons of going forward especially for you know field engineers or field technicians that might also need to be leveraging you know additional um tools uh that are only windows based right and so we want to make sure that you know they don't have to necessarily go cross device um so that 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 was uh, critical for us and i'm really excited that we'll be bringing that um here uh shortly for our customers to be able to take advantage of yeah i think that's a great decision so with that thank you very much I appreciate you guys joining thank you rachel I appreciate you um co-hosting with us and uh, giving insight about what's happening in asset manager and what's coming in um and if if anybody has any question reach out to rachel or us and we'll be happy to um, answer those and uh, make sure you have everything you needed for asset manager great thank you so much all